first thing first. This controller was given to me by Orts. There's a link in the description to where you can buy it. Also, check out OrtsGaming.com. Welcome to Canon Mario, the show where we review third-party controllers, and at the end, see how well they play Mario. Here we have the Orts Wireless Gaming Controller for Nintendo Switch. This thing is interesting. It's got three interchangeable D-pads. You have the standard cross shape, the dish that you might see on an Xbox One Elite controller, and something similar to a Sega D-pad. They can be removed very easily, with exception to the cross-shaped one. On paper, this is a good idea. The Xbox Elite controller does it very well. It's not really the same here, though. The concept for the D-pad is very cool, but it is not perfect. It bottoms out for one. You have to press much harder than I would like. And it also has this weird issue where it registers diagonals much easier than you would expect. There is also a problem when trying to press up. It only registered consistently when I pushed higher on the D-pad. For almost all use cases, it's a bit of a problem. Another problem it has are the analog sticks. First thing, it has dead zones. Not the worst in the world, but they are definitely there. Secondly, they have this weird problem. I'll show you here. As you pass the left, right, top, and bottom edges, it sort of gets stuck. It doesn't literally feel stuck, but as you can see, it doesn't register movement correctly at those four points. This can be a bit of a problem. This is why you won't see me testing any games that use the analog sticks as the primary way of movement. Another weird thing is the triggers. They feel like they are analog, but are actually digital. I checked on PC and they do the same thing. I assume they are analog triggers, but the controller is programmed to register either on or off, depending upon how far down it's pushed. I didn't need them much for my games, but I felt it was important to mention. Lastly, it has a button for turbo. So Street Fighter 2. One reviewer said the Xbox One Elite controller dish thing would be good here. They were unfortunately wrong. I had trouble with certain special moves. It would not do certain complex inputs because of the two easily pressed diagonals. I do not recommend it for Street Fighter. It was okay for Raymond Legends. Here I used the cross shape. The issue I had with the D-pad earlier was prevalent here. I had to push up higher on the D-pad than usual. I got used to it quickly after I knew what was going on. Still, this very well may bother you. Because of this, I wouldn't recommend it for any platformers that use up a lot, like Shovel Knight for example. Here is Super Bomberman R. Here I use the cross shape again. Again there was an issue where if I didn't press up high enough, it would input diagonals. Bomberman will use diagonals as directions for some reason, so this was slightly annoying. This problem happened fairly frequently, because I rolled the d-pad a lot during gameplay. Rolling would pass by the diagonals, and if I wasn't pressing up perfectly, it would send me somewhere I didn't want to go. I don't recommend this controller for Bomberman, nor do I suggest it for any game where you roll the d-pad non-stop, like a shoot 'em up Playing Sonic Mania was pretty much perfect. The Sega style D-pad was close enough to Sega controllers that it felt amazing. It was a real treat. Of course, if you want to use the analog sticks for the Emerald Mini stages, you have to deal with the smallish dead zones. But it's totally worth it. I had no issues with wrong inputs here. I very highly recommend this controller for Sonic Mania with the Sega style D-pad. It's also very good with the Xbox Elite Controller D-Pad 2. The only better way to play it would be on a PC with a Sega Genesis controller and a Genesis to PC controller adapter. Although you need to use button mapping software to do so. So anyway, if you played a lot of Sonic Mania, 
definitely buy this controller. It can connect to PC over Bluetooth, which is nice, but unfortunately it will not register the D-pad. It's a real shame because I think people would buy it just to use it on PC, and I think a lot of Switch owners would use it there too. I'm hoping they'll come out with a patch to fix this. That would make me very happy. If they ever do that, I will put an annotation at the bottom of this video. So do I like it? Well, not really. It's really good for Sonic Mania though. It just feels so good. I won't play Sonic Mania any other way again. It may be a one-trick pony, but I live for things like this. I can really dig it just for that. It has a long-lasting battery, is very comfortable, and has soft grips on it, which are very nice. I'd buy it for Sonic Mania if you play it a lot, and then later it could be a Player 2 controller. Also consider buying the Game Devil Switch Pro S controller. It's the exact same controller. Looking at Mario? Well, no. I couldn't get the D-pad to work, so I had to use the analog sticks for movement, which sucked. Oh well. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye now.